All right, hello everyone. I'm Matteo and I'm a compositing studio assistant here at Escape Studios. And um, what we're going to do today is just a brief um, Star Wars kind of related tutorial. And we're going to learn to make some lightning and nuke. Um, it's just going to be a really quick um, little tip using some basic nodes. Um, so nothing special, nothing too complicated. Everyone should be able to, if you've got a basic knowledge of nuke, you should be able to follow along. And um, we're then going to stick it into the shot, which is a shot I worked on a while back. And um, yeah, so let's start with basically the main nodes we're going to be using. And um, the concept behind this is cool because it can be applied to many different things. Lightning is just one of the small applications. Um, it's not something you normally expect to be done in Nuke, but it's a cool little trick to have. Um, if ever they ask you to do something like this, you can whip it up pretty quickly. And it's quite effective, really, um, just for being a 2D trick, which is completely procedural and easy to do. So we're, what we're going to do is start by making a rectangle, which will be the basis of our lightning, and just pop that on a constant. So plug that in. And then, um, as I said, noise is going to be a big part of this, because it's basically going to be what's going to be driving our lightning double effect. So um, the three main nodes are going to be this rectangle, the noise, and then the eye distort. And what the eye distort does is basically um, looks at a motion channel, which we can create, and um, we'll, it will distort the image, so move pixels in the image according to what that motion channel says. So we're going to use the noise to create the motion channel, eye distort to move these pixels, and that will be it. So let's start by creating a nice line with this rectangle, so grabbing it and dragging it along, something like that. And then next thing, look at the noise. Um, at the moment it's just one still image, um, but noise has one cool way of changing it quite quickly, which is this Z. So we can basically think of noise as a big cloud, and this Z allows us to move in 3D space. Um, the idea is that every unit um, the noise will change completely. So a quick way of animating this, again procedurally, is just to link up this value of the Z um, to something that changes constantly, say every frame. So for example, the frame number. Um, a quick way of doing that, just add expression, and then we're going to type in frame. And as you can see, it says result 46, so it's looking at the frame we're on and just using that as a value for the Z. So now if we look at this noise, it's going to be animated, and it's going to change frame by frame super fast. Um, we might change this later, but for the moment, let's just leave it as it is. So what we're going to do is now, seeing as this is, as we said, going to be our motion channel, we want to copy this into noise has the same values in R, G, B, and A. It's just all over the channels. So we can copy any channel in the incoming R, G, B, A, whatever. Let's just grab the alpha. And we're going to place that into the forward V channel, which is this one here. And um, this is basically inserting the motion channel into our pipe. So now the eye distort can be told to pick up on the forward. And then it's going to start applying, doing what it does. So um, basically, to understand what the eye distort does, just really quickly, it's going to look at each pixel of this original rectangle. And then it's going to look at the motion channel which we can view if we just change this to forward V, and then look at the alpha. This is our motion channel, so it's our noise. So going back to the rectangle, whoop, go back to RGB. So it's going to look at this pixel, then it's going to look at the corresponding um, motion channel for that pixel. So the value of that motion channel, as you can see here, is 0.14. So what it's going to do is basically move this pixel downwards by 0.14 of a pixel. So the effect of that is pretty much invisible because it's such a small transformation. But what we can do in the eye distort is pump it up. So for example, if we multiply by 10, it will be moving this pixel downwards by around a pixel and a half. So let's just type in the scale, which is just a simple multiplier. And as you can see, it's moved it down by one pixel and a half. So here it's just interpolating between black and white. So it's this kind of grayish color. Um, if we look at this at the moment, this isn't quite what we're going for. It doesn't really look like lightning yet. So what we're going to do is just, again, 
make this a lot higher. So let's go all the way up to something like this, 500. So yeah, it's starting to look like something. It's not quite what we want yet. So um, let's try to figure out what's going on here. Basically, we're getting, especially in some frames, still looks pretty cool, but um, in some frames we're getting these kind of isolated areas like this. And we don't really want that kind of thing because it's not what we're going for. It doesn't look like thunder. So, so the reason for this is if we look at our noise, um, it's irregular and it's changing on a vertical, in the vertical direction and in the horizontal direction. Ideally, we only kind of want horizontal variations because that will just give us up and downs and not so intense, like this kind of stuff, for pixels really close just being pushed in weird areas like this. So what you can do is just make a crop um, and pull that down, because we don't want all this vertical information. We literally only want to basically take a dimension away from this information. So um, when we do this, we're almost reducing it to a single row of pixels. And um, by default, Nuke will apply black outside, which is exactly what you're seeing. So the last pixel is whatever it is, and then from then onwards, it's just black. We can take this option off, and what this does is basically take the last pixel, so it'll take whichever pixel is here, and then extend that for the whole image. So um, this is what we'll end up with. It's basically just a series of stretched pixels. So all these pixels stretch for the whole size of the image. Um, the result of this is going to be slightly different and definitely a bit more regular and thunder looking like. So this is what we had before and this is what we have now. So we just do it on a single frame. Just starting to get there. So next step. So at this point we're pretty much, yeah, we're getting closer. Um, obviously it's white, and you might want to make it something more bluish purplish, kind of like more Star Wars looking, that's what we're going for. So let's make a glow, and actually let's make two. Um, and in the glow we can play around a bit with the size and the brightness, which will basically be, let's make one maybe more intense in the center and a bit more blurry. And um, yeah, all the glow is doing is just adding a blurred version of the image on top of itself. Um, but it also allows us to change the color of the blur. So let's make another one and make this one something like that. We can play around with all these settings later. So with these both open, um, let's just play around with the colors and see what it looks like. So um, kind of keep it on the bluish purplish side. So something like that for this one. And yeah, maybe something like that. Maybe the cool thing is we can now go back to the rectangle. And while we're looking at this, we can just make it a bit smaller if we think it's too big. And move back out, look at the final result, play back. So, yeah, it's starting together. You can play around with these settings quite a bit just to get it to look a bit more punchy. It's looking a bit flat at the moment. Um, but yeah, you can change colors, and as I said, all these settings, size and brightness are the two ones you really want to go for. Tolerance would just make it more or less visible. So, um, right, so now I've got some kind of thunder effect going on, and we can try to place that on something like what you were looking at at the beginning. So this is a shot I worked on, as I said, and um, this was the original shot. So just two guys running in a green room. And what I did was basically use different keying techniques to make a mat, which we should be able to see. And um, basically isolate the guy from the green screen and then built a new 3D environment around him. It's actually 2D, but um, projected onto 2D geometries. And uh, yeah, so new background, and what this shot is obviously missing is some electricity. So <laughs> um, we can place a merge plus and then just link that up to this. But at the moment, that's just going to do this, and I'm just going to place it on top. So what we need is to somehow do what I did for all these textures, which is basically project them onto geometries in Nuke's 3D space. 
Um, we're not going to go into that for this tutorial. As you can see, also something else is going on here because we're masking it with the inverse of the alpha. So this allows us to put the electricity behind him. Um, seeing as we've already got the alpha, you know, it's easy to use. And um, so yeah, we're going to use a little node that I put together. I'm just going to call it magic for now. Um, but if you're interested in what's inside it, we can just take a look quickly. And yeah, as you can see, it's just projections for... So if you've already done some 3D nuke, um, just a few cameras and axes, then it's just a UV project with a few transforms to make it all work. And then we're rendering it out through a camera. But let's not worry about that for the moment. So it's been projected onto a card on the building. So now if we go to a later frame, that's what's going on. So now it's just being projected here. Um, what we can do is just move it up. So we can just put a transform and do it all in 2D. And let's say move it up to here, because we want the electricity to be between these two beams. And then looking at this, we can also go back into the rectangle. And once again, as we did before, just change some settings and make it shorter. So we can pull this in and that will do that. So if we want it just between those two bars, something like that. You could then um, actually create an alpha for this. This is just a really rough way of doing it. But um, let's say something like that. Need more. And just really quickly putting this in there. All right. And let's maybe make it a bit thinner. Cool. OK, so something like that. And yeah. So now if we try to play this back, I'm using plus as a merge operation, but um, yeah, for this kind of stuff we normally use plus a screen. Um, over actually gives a nice result in this case too, but um, yeah, plus, plus gives it a bit more of a punch. And playing that back, that will stick to there thanks to our magic, but um, <laughs> actually it's kind of going down quite a bit. We could just move it a bit further up with our transform here, and yeah, go for something like that. So, yeah, it will just stick to our building, hopefully. And, um, yeah, in this shot, it's just adding a little something. I probably would work on it quite a bit more. But we could have it going up the building and um, doing all sorts of stuff. Um, but, yeah, the main focus was really just to see this cool trick, quick way of making some nice electricity. Now it's all scaled down, obviously. But, um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it and have a play around with it, see what you can make. You can change lots of things in this. You can change the noise, make it slower, faster, so it will affect it differently. Um, obviously play around with the colors, with the glows. And um, yeah, have a play around. And thanks for listening in and hope you enjoyed the tutorial and catch you soon.